In this video, we'll look at the basics of APIs. API endpoints allow you to execute PowerShell scripts from HTTP calls. HTTP could be called from any client. It doesn't need to be a PowerShell client. You could be using a Linux curl command or wget on Linux. So it kind of gives you another interface into PowerShell um, and makes it really easy to do so in PowerShell Universal. So let's create a basic API. So I'm going to create um, a new API. I am going to provide a URL. So you just say slash basic, and this will be the URL that I call. I'm going to turn off authentication and make a very, very simple HTTP um, endpoint uh, that is a get. So if we go to the details of this, I can actually say hello. And if I save this, now my API endpoint has been created. So I will be able to execute that endpoint, and you can see it returns hello. What's cool about that is I, you know, I don't need to actually just execute it in the browser. I can copy that um, invoke rest method call here and put it into my PowerShell prompt. So if I call invoke rest method from this external PowerShell prompt, you can see hello is returned. So um, it is actually executing PowerShell over HTTP. So PowerShell Universal supports uh, multiple verbs. So verbs are kind of um, what HTTP used to communicate what type of action to take. Uh, so if you create a new endpoint, we could actually have a, a post um, uh, endpoint here. And posting typically means creating something new. And it usually includes a body of some kind. So I'm going to say post. We'll disable authentication. And we'll say OK. So now I have a post method um, URL. And I am going to um, just echo out what's um, sent to me. So you can access the automatic body variable inside your endpoints to actually return what is being sent to your endpoint. So now if I come over to um, invoke rest method here and say post, I can say body. And if I say hello from PowerShell, what you're going to see is that it says it's not found because I forgot to put the method. <laughs> so we need to make sure that we include the method and set it to post. So now you can see it says hello from PowerShell. And whatever I send in is what it's going to echo back out to me. So that's because I am just using this uh, built-in body um, variable. So all our variables are documented up on our doc site. And um, this is one of the built-in variables. And I'm going to show you uh, a couple other ones. So um, next, let's look at um, creating a, a, a route parameter variable. So um, there are ways that you can pass other dynamic data in, not just via the body, but we can also pass it in via the route. So I'm going to create a new endpoint, and I'm going to say slash route slash colon name. So the colon states that any value passed in here should be passed in as a parameter. So uh, I have route, and I can say slash you know my name. Like I can put Adam in there, and it's going to pass Adam into the script. So we'll say um, authentication disabled again. And now we have our um, route that has our variable in it. And what I want to do here is actually create a param block. So I can say param name. And oops, Telesense kicking in there. Um, and I actually want to pass that name in through this name parameter, just like I would in any other PowerShell script. And what I'm just going to do is echo that back out. So we'll save that. And you can see actually inside our UI, we actually look for those variables. And you can um, put your name in here if you wanted to and execute that. And you can see Adam's returned. So I passed it in via this param block here, uh, param name. And then I just echo that out via name. So this could do any kind of thing. You know, This could hit Active Directory based on an ID that you're passing in or update an Exchange mailbox based on a username, that kind of thing. So we can also do the same thing in PowerShell. Um, and you can see it just uh, echoes it back out because it's getting that from the route parameter. Um, another way that you can pass in variables into something like this is via query string parameters. So if I just do query, and I am going to disable authentication, and I can create another um, param block, and we're going to say from query, and we'll just echo that out from query. Save that, 
And but there's no way they're actually really passing a variable, um, not via the route or anything. But what you can do is what's called a query string parameter. So if you're not super familiar with HTTP, what a query string parameter is, is anything off after the um, question mark. So if I do HTTPS localhost query question mark, and I can say from query equals um, test123. And you can see test123 is returned. So we automatically look for those query string parameters and we'll translate those into parameters as well. So, um, you know, they're optional more or less inside um, your API and you, know, you can't really discover them very easily, but it is some way to kind of like tweak what's happening. And you'll see query string parameters useful for things like paging, like I want the first 10 results, skip five of them or something like that. Um, and that kind of thing. So query string parameters are useful for kind of like adjusting based on um, those query string parameters. You just need to know what they are. All right, um, let's look at making another endpoint. Um, this one's actually gonna use um, a kind of a common feature of HTTP, which are HTTP headers. So we're gonna do headers and we're gonna disable authentication. Um, we will be looking at authentication in a future lecture. I am going to go here, and there's a couple things we could do. We could just print the headers. Um, headers is actually just a variable. It's a hash table that we produce that is um, inside our scripts. And it's actually just a good way to kind of debug what's happening inside our PowerShell script. So you can see these are all the basic headers that are passed in automatically. So um, things like the language that I'm running, uh, the cookie that I have, um, what kind of... Uh, text I, I can accept, so application JSON or plain text. Um, but what this is also useful for is if you use something like invoke uh, rest method, you can actually pass in your own headers. So um, there is actually a headers parameter here, and um, I can set that to a hash table and then pass in whatever value I'd like for these headers. And these would be like custom headers. There are, are like standard HTTP headers that you can define, um, but you can also pass in custom headers um, if you want to adjust the behavior of your endpoint based on the headers. So uh, we will just pass those headers in. And you can see it actually returned to me um, the headers one, two, three uh, were returned because I passed that in, it um, echoed out the headers back to me. I could have used that that header value um, in my PowerShell script to adjust what's happening. Um, the last thing I want to talk about is error handling. So by default, uh, our uh, API endpoints, they um, don't print out errors. So let's actually set this to error here. And if I were to throw in here um, and execute that, you're going to see that, uh, well, uh, that's wrong. Throwing will uh, cause a 400, because that's a terminating error. What won't happen is if you have um, write error. So for example, um, non-terminating errors will um, not cause a problem. You're just gonna return an empty result. So this is problematic for some people, because um, if an error happens, you kinda wanna know. Um, and then for other people, um, you know, you might have errors generated by other libraries and that kind of thing, so you wanna suppress it. So you can actually change that behavior by going to um, the settings here on our endpoints and changing the silently continue setting, which is the default, to stop. And once you set it to stop, uh, what you'll actually see is rather than it failing silently, you're going to get that 400 error that I saw with the terminating error. And what's nice is in PowerShell 7, um, if, oops, let's try that again, copy. Um, if I were to invoke that here, you're actually going to see the error that was returned from write, write error. Um, you won't see that in Windows PowerShell just because of how it works. You're just going to see the bad request. And you could actually dig out that error message that's included in the response, um, but they made some improvements to invoke rest method to actually print out the error in PowerShell 7. So this has been a lecture on the basics of APIs in PowerShell Universal.